we're going to all go over there. And we're going to rest easy. No more heartache. No more pain. No more bill collection. We'll just sit back and relax. Yeah, I can see Pastor David now doing that step. <laughs> oh, man. Man, I remember back at home. Mama was grilling on the grill one day. And it was an old blue chick hound. He was tearing his eye on one of them chicken legs. And he got up over there and grabbed one of them chicken legs. But it was too hot to handle and too cold to hold. But he went running down through them woods, but he didn't let go of that chicken leg. And like Deacon Ray this morning, he couldn't let go of that son. Hey Amen. I'm glad he didn't let go of that son. Because we're going to rest easy. Amen. Hey Amen. <laughs> oh, man. Boy, y'all ought to hey, take off them tennis shoes. Hey Amen. Uh, he, got, he got him tennis shoes. Eh? I guess them golden slippers going to hurt his feet. <laughs> hey Amen. God be the glory. We're so glad to be here today and give him the praise and the honor. Yes, Amen. Amen. To our deacon staff, Amen. to the choir that has sung so beautifully this morning, Amen. all of my father's children here in the Morning Star family right. and on the web. Yes, We're so glad. We're so glad to be here. Got my sweet tea over there looking so scrumptious. Come on. Amen. I tell you, boy, just, let, just Thursday, boy, we... We celebrated 15 years. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Everybody can't say that. Amen. But we've been through the storm and rain. But we're still here. Amen. God is good and worthy to be praised. Amen. Amen. We're so happy to be here with you today. And I know while the Spirit is here. Turn with us All right. to Matthew chapter 7 All right. and starting at verse 28. Mm-hmm. Matthew chapter 7, starting at verse 28. We'll be coming from the NIV version of God Holy Writing. If you have another translation, that's quite all right. We're going to wind up on the same road because it is the word of God. Right. Amen. Amen. Don't wait till the grease get cold. He dropped that fish in it while it's hot. Amen, amen. And when it come out, hey, don't none taste better than fish out the grease. Boy, oh, man. Amen. Matthew chapter 7, verse, starting at verse 28. If you have it, say amen. Amen. Not say, wait a minute. Amen. And it reads like this. Then when Jesus had finished saying these things. Mm -hmm. The crowd were amazed at his teaching because he taught as one who had authority and not as their teachers of the law. May God have a blessing to the reading of his awesome word. Let's talk with you briefly. With the aid of the Holy Spirit, from the thought, amazing, the amazing one. Amazing, the amazing one. Now, I did a little research and took my time to count. And in the word, the word amazing, or amaze, occurs 31 times in the Gospels. Usually, this describes the response of the crowd to Jesus. Even as they sat and looked at him. Uh Now, as we sing, and I stand in amazement in the presence of an awesome God. Yes, Yes, when I hear... The song, Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. 
I once was lost, uh -huh. but now I am found. Yeah. I was blind, but now I see. Right. Yes, when I think of those words, and I remember where I used to be. Uh -huh. Yeah, my heart begins to overflow with joy. Because I know that if God was not on my side, right. yeah, I know that I probably would be in somebody's jailhouse. Right. I probably would have been laying up under somebody's bridge. Right. I probably would have been strung out on drugs, but thanks be to God that it was his amazing grace right. that reached way down and picked us up. Right. Anybody in here today? can thank God for his amazing grace? Is there anybody in here that know that if it wasn't for God on your side, you would know where you would be? Yes, as we begin to read this text, it's almost funny to picture this crowd. Everything Jesus said left them in awe. Right. Everything that Jesus said left them slow, uh, left their jaws open. On, yeah, it left them rubbing their eyes. All right. Yeah, yeah, he was teaching and they were amazed. Right. Now I wonder, you're asking in your mind what amazed this crowd. Yeah, they were amazed at his teaching. All right. Yeah, imagine that kind of response from a, a, a person preaching their first son. All right. Yeah, Dr. E. Stanley Jones, a Methodist missionary, mm -hmm. once described his first son. All right. He said that the little church... Uh, was filled with relatives and friends. Yeah, yeah they were all anxious uh, uh, that he should do good uh, on his first son. Right. Yeah, yeah, he had prepared uh, for three weeks on this message. Yeah, yeah he began uh, on a high note. Yes, sir. Yeah, and after a half a dozen sentences, he used a, a word that he never used before All right. and one that he'll never use again. On, right. He said the word indifferentism. <laughs> indifferentism. Yeah, and after he said this word, there was a young lady that was in the crowd that he knew uh, that, that was in college. She smiled at him. And then she dropped her head. All right. Yeah, her smile upset him. Yeah, and his mind all of a sudden went absolutely blank. Right. Yeah, he stood there grasping for something to say. Right. And after a few seconds, uh, uh, he finally uh, blurted out to the crowd, I'm sorry. I'm very sorry. Yes, sir. But I've forgotten my son. Yeah, as he started to his seat, he was ashamed and confused. And as he was about to sit down, a small inner voice said to him, have, Haven't I, have I done anything for you? Have I done anything that you can mention? If so, tell that. All right. Yeah, he turned around and he started uh, as he stepped out of the pool pit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because he felt that he did not belong behind the pool pit. Right. He, he felt inadequate. Yeah. And so he said, friends, I can't preach, but I know what God has done for me in my life. Yeah, and how he has changed me. And though I can't preach right now, I shall tell, 
and I'll be a witness for the rest of my day. Yeah, yeah, at the end of, of his message, a youth, a young man came to him and said, I want what you done found. Yeah, 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 here today I can say that he is a pastor in Africa. Yeah, yeah, we all have troubles with our first sermon. We all have troubles with our first testimony. We all have troubles when it comes down to missionary work and witnessing to brothers and sisters. But oh, when you think back what God has done on your behalf, when you think back of what God has done in your life, oh, when he woke you up this morning, closed you in your right mind, gave you the faculty of your limbs, when you think about you should have been dead and gone, but God, it causes you to have a spontaneous praise. But God, stepped in and made a way out of no way. But God, when he came into our life, he gave us a testimony. But God, when he stepped in, my hand began to move. Woo. Ben, maybe it's just me. Oh, sometimes I get crazy. Somebody say I'm cuckoo sometimes when it comes to God. But that's all right. I'll be crazy for him. <laughs> I know my instructors don't told me that you stand behind the podium give the word of God and sit down but what they didn't teach us is that when the Holy Spirit begins to move on the altar of your heart when Jeremiah said it's like fire, yeah. shut up in your bones. Yeah. You can't stay still. Yeah. And I don't know how you can sit there and not say nothing when it comes to the goodness of the Lord. But that's just you. But when it comes to me, I got to pay. Can't sit still. Because God been too good to me. And if the Lord has ever done anything for you, you ought to be able to say amen. It shouldn't be no choreographed service. I shouldn't have to tell you to say amen. I shouldn't have to tell you to clap your hands. I shouldn't have to tell you to stand on your feet. But if you got God on the outside, he pulls the string. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This same God that I'm talking about. Yeah. This carpenter of Nazareth right. left his workshop yeah he hung up his apron right. yeah and he ordered the greatest sermon that the world had ever heard right. yeah 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 in this sermon he talked about judging others right. yeah he turns around and says that there are some folks that like to judge mm -hmm. but how can you see the sawdust in your brother's eye. All right. And you got the whole tree in yours. All right. All right. Yeah, he said, first of all, you got to get that tree out of your eye. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before you can see the sawdust in mine. Right. Yeah, yeah, we ought to be careful how we judge others because it's just been a few days ago yes, that the Lord has saved your soul. Right. Yeah, and he worked on you and, it, and you know how long it took for the Lord to work on you. Oh, so don't you get impatient and think that they ought to be like a microwave and, and go from zero to 100 in three seconds. Yeah. Secondly, he talked about effective prayer yeah. and the golden rule. Right. Yeah, he said, ask, and it shall be given. Yeah. Seek, and ye shall find. Mm -hmm. Knock, and the door shall be open unto you. The reason why some of us hadn't got our answers, uh, our prayers answered, the reason why some of we of us have not been delivered yet is because we are too cute to ask God for some help. We want folks to think we got it all together. 
We are, we are about a bag of chips and a soda on the side. We want to dress the part. We want to look the part. We want to make, th- make folk think that we're walking on easy street. But everything is crumbling all around us. Yeah, we ought to be able to ask God. But you got some sedity preachers and Christians that'll tell you that you ain't got no faith. If you ask God more than one time. <laughs> Let me tell you something. If you take every letter out of what I just quoted, it says ask. Huh. Ask God. That's right. Don't you know the story of the, of the persistent widow? All right. All right. She went to an unjust judge. Yes, sir. Right. He had already made up his mind. He had already given the verdict. But he, she kept on asking him. And after a while, he gave in to her demands. Right. Yes, and I know our God sometimes, sometimes sit back and he want to know how persistent you want it. He want to know how bad you want it. He want to know if you really mean what you're asking for. Are you ready for the blessing to come through? And if you're ready, you won't be able to ask him for what you want. But then he turns around, he says, do unto others. As you would have them to do unto you. If you won't hurt yourself, don't you hurt nobody else. If you don't like nobody talking out the side of their neck to you, yeah, don't you talk out the side of your neck to somebody else. Yeah, if you don't want bad things said to you or somebody to criticize you, don't you criticize nobody else. If you, oh, I'm going to get in somebody. If you don't like nobody lying on you, don't you lie on nobody else. Don't talk down to somebody if you don't want them to talk down to you. If you don't want it, don't you dish it off. Then he turned around. He says, what road would you travel? Yeah, he says, on one gate, one road, the way to hell is paid with bunch of folk. Yes, sir. It's broad, and folks are going down Broad Street. Right. Yeah, down Broad Street, every, there ain't no rules down Broad Street. Uh-huh. Everybody can live the way they want to live down Broad Street. Yeah, you can talk the way you want to talk down Broad Street. Yeah, you can lay your religion down and tell somebody how you feel down Broad Street. You can let your hair down and act any kind of way when it comes down to Broad Street. Broad Street will lead you to hell. Broad Street got fine brimstone. Down Ball Street, yeah. when you get to hell, oh, that's gashing and gnashing of teeth. Yeah. yeah, hell is a real place. It ain't no, it ain't no purgatory. It ain't no waiting area. It's hell or heaven. Yes, sir. All right. All right. All right. In hell, you always going to be consumed with fire. Yes, sir. He said, but on the other street, uh-huh. narrow street, yeah. yeah, every now and then you'll find a traveler. Yeah, on narrow street, you'll find those who want to love the Lord. Yeah. Down on, on narrow street, there are some folks that, that want to serve God, and when they want to serve God, they'll follow his example. Yeah, yeah they'll live by his word. Yeah. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Yes, sir. Yeah. He also preached on watch who you're following. He said, there are those out there that look like sheep. There are those who are dressed up like sheep. Can I bring it to 2014? Yeah, there are those who are sitting in three-piece suit. There are those that got their hair did up, got their nails done, wearing red bottom shoes. Yeah, they got Bibles up under their arm. Rings on every finger. Yeah, they, they cross every T and dot every I. 
Yeah, but they're ravaging wolves on the inside. Yeah, they'll tell you how to make it to get that Mercedes. They'll tell you how to get that leisure jet. They'll tell you how to drop a seed in that ministry so that you can get a prayer cloth or some holy oil. But then they won't tell you how to make it to heaven because they're ready to tear you asunder. Tells you that you'll know the tree by its fruit. A tree that's corruptible can't bear good fruit. It's going to bear corruptible fruit. But though those trees that have a good, they'll bear good fruit. Amen. And so it ought to be a, a red flag that goes off when you look at their fruit. Yeah, but I know somebody in here talking about, but pastor, that's judging. Yeah, the Bible says, don't judge that ye might be judged. Yeah, but it also tells you that you'll tell the tree by the fruit it bears. So I ain't judging you. Yeah, I'm just a good fruit inspector. Yes, sir. Come on. Come on. Come on. Ah. <laughs> Thirdly, he, he, turn around, he says, uh, uh, you got, there's some true disciples. All right. All right. Everybody that says, Lord, Lord, uh -huh. ain't going to enter. That's right. Everybody that, that turns around and lifts up their holy hands yeah. really ain't holy. Uh -huh. Yeah, because... They'll lift up holy hand one minute and cuss you out with them hands still up. Yeah, they'll treat you like you are a red-headed stepchild. Right. Hope I ain't got no red-headed folk in him. Right. Yeah. But they will treat you and call you everything but a child of the king. Right. Yeah, but you got to watch uh, those folk. Yes, sir. Every now and then, if you ain't careful, you'll wind up being one of those folk. Yeah, so we'll ask God to, to bridle your tongue. Uh -huh. Oh, so you're going to be a true disciple that follows his instruction. All right. Yeah, lastly, he talks about building yes, on a solid foundation. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He talks about one that built his house mm -hmm. on sand. Right. And he also talks about one that built his house on on a rock. Yes, whether you build your house on sand or on a solid foundation, let me tell you, there's going to be some storms that's coming your way. You can't avoid the storm. Yeah, you can't build your house away from the storm. Yeah, the storm is coming your way whether you like it or not. And then when that storm comes, it's going to test your foundation. Yes, sir. So what are you building on? Uh -huh. Are you building on getting a pat on the back? Well. Are you building on somebody telling you you showed something good today? Uh -huh. Or are you, are you building on people lifting you up? Uh -huh. Because if you know it or not, them same folk that lift you up yeah. will drop you on a heartbeat. Yes, sir. Yeah, they'll lift you up one minute, but their mood might change. Yes, yeah, and they'll cause you to get, they'll get jealous of you, and then before you know it, you done hit rock bottom. Uh -huh. There'll be some storm that come your way. Yeah, you in here praising God? Then bills will come. Money gone. But the bills are due. Oh, that's a storm. Yeah. When your children acting a fool. Yeah. And you don't raise them the best way you know how. Yeah, yeah, but then all of a sudden, they get locked up. That's a storm. Yeah. yeah, when you come in here and you don't praise God and you happy, but then somebody come around and make you, make you get upset. And then you got to watch them walk off smiling because they done made you upset. Yeah, that's a storm. That old vehicle will start acting crazy. Yes, sir. Yeah, and you got to sit there and you got to go to work in the morning. Yes, sir. Yeah, you trying to figure out how you get there and then you got a boss that's insensitive. Uh -huh. And don't care how you get there, they just want you there. Yes, yeah, that's a storm. Yeah, storms are going to come yes, your way, but it's, uh, it's your attitude when you're in the storm. Yes, that's going to determine yes, how long the storm lasts. Right. 
Now you can make that storm worse. Oh, you can put your hands on your hips, shake your head, let some words that, that, that fly out that ain't in Scripture. Amen. But oh, if you be faithful, if Jesus is on board, you ought to be able to say, Jesus, handle this. And Jesus know how to step on the ship and say, peace, uh, be still. Yeah, after Jesus got through preaching, the people were amazed at his word. But not only were they amazed at his word, but the people were amazed at his miracles. Now the Greek word in amazed is broken down to mean out of and stand to. Literally, to stand outside of oneself. Yeah, if we break it down to what we talk about, we, we say he was beside himself. All right, all right. Yeah, yeah, it's the idea of jumping out of your own skin to be astonished. Right. Yeah, if Jesus yes, sir. is God in flesh right. and he appeared among us or he dwells among us, uh, uh, we ought to be amazed right. at him. Yes, sir. yes, when God comes into the building through his Holy Spirit, we ought to be amazed at what he does in the sanctuary. Yeah, when he does what he does in our life, we ought to be amazed that God is good. God is worthy to be praised. He's an amazing God. Yeah, and because of what he does, hallelujah comes off our lips. Thank you, Jesus comes off our lips. We may cry sometimes, clap our hands, stomp our feet, run down the aisle, but we know that if it wasn't for the Lord on our side, he is amazing. It's a sad thing. When we stand in the presence of God, and we easily lose the sense of wonder that is essential to genuine praise. Yes, we go through service now as is choreographed. We sit here out of duty. We come in here and we sit in our favorite seat. And we sit there and we, we, we should just go ahead and have some popcorn and a soda because we don't come to praise God no more but we come to be entertained yeah yeah because we got cameras I don't want to let nobody see me sweat out my suit I don't want to see let nobody sweat out my perm and, and, and my weave yeah I done spent too much money on that I gotta look good That's, this, this thing gotta last me to the end of the month but when it comes down, I mean, even a preacher, we got to tell you to get up, high five somebody, tell somebody this, tell somebody that, say amen. Talk about it. All right. Talk about it. Just to see if you're alive. Huh. No wonder other religions say the dead in Christ going to rise first, and that's Baptist. All right. All right. You get that after a while. Yes, Amen. But we ought to have a spontaneous praise because we know what God has done for us. Yeah. It amazed them. We need to be amazed. When, it talk, when we talk about the goodness of Jesus, we ought to be amazed. When we talk about what God has done in the Bible, but we ought to be more amazed because we know what God is doing right now. Yes, yeah, we, he may not come when we want him. All right. But when he shows up, he shows up right on time. Okay. And because God is a good God and he shows up right on time, we ought to give him some praise. Yes, we ought to mean mm -hmm. what we're saying. Yes, we ought to mean in our heart Amen. when we say that we are amazed by the presence of God uh -huh. 
when we clap our hands, when we lift up our hands, when we praise God, we're letting God know that we are in amazement and thanking him for what he's doing on our behalf. What he's doing on our brother and sister behalf. Because he's blessing somebody else. Don't you get stuck up. Don't you get mad and upset. Because when he's praising him, we ought to praise God too for the blessings of somebody else. If you wait just a little bit, he'll be knocking on your door. Reason why we can't get blessed because we're jealous of somebody else's blessing. Yeah, we cut off our own blessing because we're jealous. Yeah, but if we begin to be happy and glorifying God for what the blessing that they're getting, man, God can bless us too. Sister Erica got her a new car. And when she told me about it, I was so happy. I said, let me go in there and get me some of that new car smell. I sat in that seat. I'm happy for her. Amen. She got a blessing. I'm happy for her. Amen. God might not bless me with a new vehicle. But if he blesses me in my right mind, that's enough. Yeah, if he blesses me to breathe air, that's enough. Yeah, if my heart is popping properly, that's enough. I could have been laying in somebody's hospital, but I'm standing here preaching today. That's enough. God didn't owe me that. God don't owe you. But because of his blessing, we ought to be able to praise him. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, but God, out of all he did saying and his miracles, it amazed the people. But then, something miraculous happened. Jesus was amazed. Yes, uh, if we can shift gears and, and notice how the tables were turned. Yeah, that Christ uh, here was amazed. What amazed him? Yes, these uh, are the only two times uh, uh, when the words apply to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For we'd expect uh, that it would take a lot to amaze the amazing one. Yes, but you're asking me, Reverend, why was he amazed? Number one, he was amazed at their faith. Yeah, do you remember the story of the faith of the centurion? Yeah, over in Luke chapter 7, verses 1 through 10. Yes, it was a centurion that loved his servant. And his servant was at the point of death. And so he sent some servants to Jesus to tell them all the accolades of their master. Yeah, but he turned around and said, he's a good man. He treats us fair. He does us right. He doesn't do us wrong. And whatever, we can go to him and ask him for whatever we want, and he won't turn us down. He said, but we are here today because my master servant mm -hmm. is sick and at the point of death. Mm -hmm. Now, I didn't say that he didn't love these, these ones that he sent to Jesus. Mm -hmm. But he just talked about he loved this one so well that he didn't want him to die. Mm -hmm. And so the conversation got so good, I, I can imagine Jesus saying, okay, man, I got to go see who this person is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I'll go with you. I'm going to heal them, but I want to sit down and talk with this man. So Jesus began to walk with the servant. But while they were on their way, another servant came and said, Jesus, don't come. He said, because the fact is, my master say he's not worthy to have you in his house. He said, but all you got to do is speak the word, and I know that that servant will be healed. He says, I'm a man of authority. Didn't he say that? He said, I can tell my servant to go this way, uh -huh. and they're going to go. Yes, if I tell them to come to me, they're going to come. Yes, 
Yeah, whatever I tell them to do, they're going to do it. I am the command of soldiers, but I know that you have authority over sickness. And if you go ahead and say the word, I know my servant will be healed. All right. mm -hmm. Jesus looked around. Mm -hmm. He said, man, mm -hmm. I hadn't seen this type of faith in all of Israel. Mm -hmm. all right. If I could use my own word, he said, man, I hadn't seen this type of faith among my own peeps. Amen. But because of this faith, your servant is he. Yeah, he was amazed at the centurion's faith. But in Mark chapter 6, verses 1 through 6, he was amazed at their lack of faith. Yeah, it was the faith that astonished Jesus. Either the presence or the absence of faith. Jesus, in one place, yeah, was astonished because he found faith where it wasn't or shouldn't have, have been expected. Yeah, on the other hand, he, he didn't find faith where it should have been. Yeah, both cases amazed Jesus. Jesus is not impressed with our status or our wealth. He's not impressed with our power or our ability. But he's amazed when we trust him as we should. Yeah, as I close here this morning. Yeah, our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ is amazed at our faith here today. In spite of our difficulties that we might face. Yeah, he's amazed at our faith. Uh -huh. uh, is he amazed at the lack of our faith? Regardless of the promises that he has given us. Yeah, what bothers you here this morning? Yeah, are you trusting him in all that you do? Yeah, are you resting on the promises of God? Yeah, are you shaking in your faith? If you're shaking in your faith, I want to encourage you here today to trust in him fully because he never will leave you alone. Yes, if you trust in God, yeah, you will be amazed and you will amaze him too. Yeah, if you trust in in God, no matter what winds may come, what waves may be upon you, just trust in God, he'll make a way out of no way. Is there anybody in here this morning that's ready to amaze the amazing one? Is there anybody in here this morning, no matter what the doctor might say, you're still praising God. Lord, no matter what folk may say about you, you're still praising God. Yeah, they might have said that you weren't going to amount to anything. But a smile comes on your face and said, My God is able to take a nobody and make them into somebody. Oh, somebody might tell you that you're not going to make it. But you can tell them with a smile that my God shall surprise. All my knees are according to the riches and glory. Oh, if somebody told you that you're not going to do this or that, uh, you can tell them that no weapon formed against me will prosper. Oh, do you trust in God? Do you trust him to make a way out of nowhere? Do you trust in him to answer your prayer? Do you trust in him that he's going to get your child and bring them back home? Do you trust in him to put your marriage back together? Do you trust in him to keep your marriage together? Folks these days don't want to work nothing out. they rather say, I, I want to go through a divorce than to say, let's stick it out. Today, 
if we put God first in everything that we do, if we trust in him to lead and guide us all the way, maybe he got a bet with the devil and said, have you considered my servants down at Morningstar? Have you considered Pastor Max Swain? Yeah, I got enough faith in him that he's going to stand with me no matter what. And then when the winds come, the waves come, I might lose it all tomorrow. But long as I got Jesus, that's enough. Long as God is on my side, that's enough. Maybe he's about to take something from me to bless me with something. Have you ever thought that God's already got it worked out? Have you ever thought that God's got a plan for your life? Have you ever thought that God's about to make a way out of nowhere? He's about to open up a window in your life that you won't have room enough to receive. So the next time something happened to you, don't say, Lord, why me? Why don't you say, Lord, why not me? Lord, produce in me a light that will be able to shine so that men and women, boys and girls, won't see me no more. But they'll see you and give you praise. As the choir sing. Maybe that's someone that wants to join this family. Or any family in this city by baptism, Christian experience, or by that. Why don't you come? If the Spirit is talking to you, and He's knocking on the door of your heart, why don't you come? Amen. Give God a hand clap of praise. God is talking to you. Don't look through the shutters and 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 and, and open the door. But...